Welcome to Art with McKenzie. Thanks for being here so we can do some art together. We are going to make something awesome. Be sure to check out my website and Etsy page for all kinds of cool art for your home. And welcome back to the finale of our T-Rex modeling tutorial. Today we're going to finish up the details and that's it. We're just finishing up the details today. Nothing special. Um, but if you've been following me this far, congratulations. You've done an amazing job. Uh, if there's anything that I missed or you need more questions about, just leave uh, your questions in the comment section below and I will get to them. So I'm just naming up some of uh, my upper right hand corner menu, some of the objects that we've got. I'm going to get rid of our little Gennaro man right here. I'm going to go into edit mode and we're going to see uh, all our polys that we have. And we're sitting at about 5 million triangles right now. So we're going to up this. Uh, go into x ray mode. Grab your select circle and highlight her entire body. And an easy way to do this is just to zoom out because your select circle size will stay the same um, but it'll cover a lot more area and you want to stay in x-ray mode that way it goes all the way through and, and highlights all the vertices and we're just going to subdivide this once and we're up to seven million triangles and we missed a little bit of her neck that's all right By now, with all these uh, faces, your system might start slowing down a little bit, like mine is. Um, when it's doing a lot of calculations in the wireframe mode, it'll go slower, but in uh, sculpt mode, you should be able to work fairly easily. So we'll just highlight that little section, uh, subdivide it, get it caught up with the rest of our body, and we'll go into draw and you'll see that everything you start drawing on her new body will be a lot smoother than it was before. If your system isn't capable of handling this very smoothly, then stick with the lower poly counts. Uh, but if you can handle it, um, increase that resolution uh, by subdividing as best you can. I'm just gonna go over every little surface detail real fast and smooth it out. We'll go into draw sharp, make our cursor small, and we'll just start drawing little circles for scale definition around her body. Now I have sped up this video once again, so you don't have to sit through 30 minutes of me drawing circles. So add the detail that you want, take your time, pause the video, uh, and come back. Or follow along if you can draw these circles super fast. That's impressive if you can. I mean, that'd be awesome. Uh, but I can't. That's why I had to speed up the video. Make this a little bit more interesting for you. Now you can do what I'm doing, uh, but basically what I've done this entire time is just use very simple tools uh, to be able to create what I want to create that's in my head. Uh, and with everything that you've learned with me so far, you should be able to do the same um, and make your own creations using the same tools uh, as I have. And I'm going to go over her arm a little bit. Go into her body. I put some streaks down with the draw sharp tool uh, to help give her a little more leathery look. I'll hold down control to add uh, add to the sculpt. I'll let go of control and then let the tool take away as needed. We just go uh, with the shape of her body, the shape and curvature. And we'll add some uh, cross lines to differentiate. Have a little bit of, bit of randomness in there. And I'm not using a reference photo for this. I'm just kind of looking at it, seeing what looks good. And you do the same. 
Uh, I think these long lines and valleys look really good. That's why I'm doing it. But you do your dinosaur any way you want. With everything you've learned so far, you should be able to do and create anything, at least any dinosaur that you want. Uh, from the very first video when we started off with the block, you can use that as a template to make a Deinonychus, Velociraptor, Gallimimus, uh, any bipedal dinosaur. And we'll do some quadrupeds later. Uh, in a future series, I'll be doing a Brachiosaur head, and uh, that'll be a master class. Uh, before that, I will be doing a master class of Armina head. So look out for that one. That's going to be exciting. Because that's the one we are going to print and put on our walls. And uh, I do skip around a lot. And I find that's very useful uh, because it helps uh, what I'm going to do in the future. So all those underscores that I did under her body kind of dictate what I do with her leg right here. Uh, I try to stay with the same uh, technique during each sculpt, so I, I keep that consistency there, and you should do the same. If you're going to start doing uh, fine lines like this, then continue doing it all over where you can. Uh, because if you stop and come back to it a day, a week, a month later, uh, your technique is going to be a little bit different. And it's going to be seen in your sculpt. So you want to kind of avoid that. So when you start uh, in a groove, keep going with your groove, man. Just keep knocking it out. Uh, and that'll keep uh, some consistency with your models. What I like about this is it does kind of act like clay. Uh, all those tiny circles that you added uh, for her scaling detail. When you add these leather lines, skin lines, uh, they also manipulate uh, the circles that you've, you've added. Um, it'll also work around the ribs, uh, elbows, knees, bones, joints, everything you've added. And then even when you go back and you add these other little circles, they will work around uh, those leather lines that you just made. So this is a really cool tool, a uh, really cool system to do, and so much easier than, than doing this in clay. And very few things in nature are smooth. So that's why we add all these tiny little details that helps break up the lines and your brain kind of naturally sees uh, something that looks more realistic uh, than if it were smooth. Your brain knows. Your brain knows what animals are supposed to look like. So we'll just keep going, adding little things here and there. And we're not really too sure what a T-Rex looks like exactly. I think there's only four or five imprints that we have of her body. And they did have uh, these round circly scales around her. I think one was on her rib, her backside. Uh, her backside, not her butthole or cloaca. Come on now. Her back, her dorsal uh, area. And they all kind of look the same. Um, does that mean she didn't have any feathers whatsoever? We don't know. But she probably did have some type of proto feather feathers. <laughs> proto feathers. Proto feathers along the dorsal side of her back. Now what I'm doing here is adding a little bit of uh, a little topography on um, these round scales. It helps break up uh, the monotony of the smoothness of those little round dots um, kind of add some character and I like to add these little freckles or moles around her body um, 
again, it also gives her detail, gives her a little bit of character, uh, and it makes my Mina, my Mina. Uh, and whatever your dinosaur's name is, when you add these, it will make your dinosaur yours. Uh, it's like an artistic signature. Um, because even if you are following exactly with me, then I mean you're not going to put these specific uh, moles uh, or growths exactly where I'm putting mine, uh, and that will make your art uh, just as unique as mine. And that's what we're going for. We're going for something unique. And like on her legs, I'll fill in these little spots. Give her a little bit of that depth. And like I have in previous videos, this video is sped up. And we'll go back to draw sharp. We'll keep adding in all this little detail. To object mode and we will work on her cheeks we'll highlight it we will subdivide it to A to grab everything uh, Q and then subdivide quite a few times we'll go back to our sculpt and drawing tools and we're going to smooth out all the new faces that we just added oh my god that looks scary We'll get rid of everything else so we can see the whole uh, crux of her cheeks. And we're just going to smooth out, draw a little bit, smooth some more, draw some more. My system couldn't keep up, so I will go back uh, into edit, select everything, and un unsubdivide. And now, when I go back to sculpt, you can see uh, it works a lot faster, a lot smoother. So, if you do over subdivide, uh, you can undo it by just unsubdividing it again, and it works a lot better than modifiers, I find. Now we got some cheek detail. Throw in her tongue. Get her teeth back. Get another look at her. And wherever I stopped, you can keep going. Um, you can add as much detail or as little detail as you want. Because uh, I think at this point, uh, you know uh, how to do things. So we'll go into shading, and you'll go into this upper left-hand corner, and you'll see that your little icon change. And when you do, that's when you left-click, and then you scroll until the darkened area, or the darkened window is darkened, let go, and that will expand your screen into the smaller area. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to, but I don't use those extra windows for anything. 
Um, but we're going to try some coloring here. And th these are your nodes. You'll start off with the principal BSDF. And when you click on base color, it'll bring up this little window. Choose a nice little base color. And pick a color. And for each object that you pick, uh, you'll have a new submenu like this. Um, and then when you add a material to it and give it a color, it'll automatically be stored. So you don't have to uh, refigure every color for each um, object that you've got. So we'll click her cheek, click this base color, we'll go for something kind of pink. And then we'll do the same thing with her tongue. We'll go to this menu, go to the pink, and boom, it's the same color as her cheeks. And we'll do the same thing for her gums. Drop down, go to that pink color. And we are doing this for fun. Uh, we're basically done with our sculpt and model, uh, but I wanted to show you a little bit extra uh, just so you can see if you do plan on printing this out uh, with these nodes, you can see what your sculpt could potentially look like. We'll click on our eyes, we'll give them a nice little yellow shade, and you can mess with uh, all these little sub menus down here uh, the roughness. Um, that's exactly what it sounds like. You put it all the way up, it'll have a rough texture. You slide it all the way down, it'll be very glossy uh, and shiny. That's really neat um, and fun to play with. But now we need to put her in a world. change her color up to a brown give her a nice Jurassic Parky feel we're not doing anything complicated here um, we're just doing the most basic simple things uh, so I just wanted to show you the other fun stuff that uh, Blender has and you can go to each tooth and Give it define its own uh, color and you probably have like 50 teeth so you can do it for each one I'm just gonna do a few here uh, as an example and in the description below I'm gonna have uh, a link to some of these uh, high-definition environments uh, so when we click on the sub menu go to world we will delete this We'll hit Shift A and add an environmental texture, and we'll link uh, the two together. And I opened up a Scythian environment. It has its own lighting with the sun. Um, so you can see it in a, in a more natural light. And here it is. Here is our dinosaur that we've made together in natural lighting, a little bit of color. She looks pretty freaking amazing. Like I said before, you can keep going with more detail. This was a nice long tutorial, and I appreciate everyone who's followed and, and played along with me. Because uh, creating is so much fun. And I'm really happy that you followed along with me. And got to create something of your own. So thanks for joining me on Art with McKenzie with making a dinosaur. Remember to hit like and subscribe uh, and then we'll bring you more content and then we'll create some more art together.